somebody wants to take the time to read through the sort of laborious 200 and some page order, um, you'll sort of see the distinctions made amongst the 15 Georgia Pacific factors from a typical um, patent infringement setting to a RAND setting. Um, the main difference here is that in, or at least one of the main differences here is that in a typical patent infringement setting, the patent owner or the patentee has a complete monopoly over the patent. They do not have to license the patent. In a RAND setting, the judge had decided that um, RAND, reasonable and non-discriminatory, meant that um, um, that the parties or the, the patent owner had to license the patent to anybody in the world, meaning there was no more monopoly power. And then the other part of this is that um, in the standard essential patent setting or in the RAND setting, you have these concerns that one person needs to take a license, one implementer of the standard needs to take a license to all of these patents that are out there. So you have to consider the fact that if I'm taking, if I'm an implementer taking a patent license to one or two or three standard essential patents, there might be another 2,000 out there that I also have to take a license to. And in order to actually use the standard, I may need to, to, to take into account as an implementer all of these payments I'm going to have to make, all these royalty payments I'm going to have to make to the world before I use the standard um, and still make a profit on the product that I'm trying to make. So these Georgia Pacific factors are more set up on a one-on-one, -on -one, I have a product, I'm infringing or I'm alleged to have infringed, and there's a, um, somebody saying, okay, well, you have to pay me a royalty. And you look at it sort of from the sense of how much is this patent worth to this product um, under that one-to-one -one relationship as opposed to sort of a worldwide relationship.